the flag bearer of the Labour Party, LP, Peter Obi, in February 2023, elections has put forward the proposal for a five-year single presidential tenure for each of the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. His proposal comes in response to a recent press briefing by Atiku, the candidate of the, People Democrat, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the same election who suggested a constitutional amendment to establish a six-year single term for the president. In contrast, Obi disagreed with the six-year tenure idea advocating for a five-year term with a 30-year rotation system. He believes that such an amendment to the constitution will result in a functional and productive framework for Nigeria, including the introduction of a single tenure system. Joining us live is Adeniyi Kunu, journalist and public commentator. Kunu, Adeniyi, it's a pleasure to have you on Plus Politics. Uh, thank you very much for having me, uh, Bola Roba. Uh, it's uh, a very uh, calm evening where I am, and I'm grateful to be here, sir. Before we go into the nitty-gritty of our, of our topic, I, I think it is just appropriate to ask you, what is your general take of the last general elections, especially the presidential uh, polls? Well, well, I like to say that the constitution has actually nailed the coffin, and nobody can actually resurrect the dead because the coffin has nails in it, and it's been entered. Uh, by implication, I'm talking about the very many uh, divergent opinions that... Um, followed the presidential election. Uh, there's a verdict, and everybody who is a proper and civilized political sports person should just accept what has been done. But that, of course, doesn't mean going to sleep on the obvious lapses that we found in the election. Um, every exercise, uh, every cycle, gives us the opportunity to really examine how well we performed or not. And the last election, especially the presidential election, has opened us up to a vista of what many of us should begin to examine properly and also intervene so that we can have a better political cycle, a political system, and the participation ultimately of the electorate. But at the same time, it also tells us that those who come to equity must do the same with clean hands. And now I'm talking about the judiciary. Uh, if we check the last eight years leading to the uh, current administration, we'll find out that many persons within the judicial arm of this times leave us wondering uh, that we met the issue. So I think that every institution are responsible for the eventual emergence of anybody who is a leader in this country uh, must actually be, you know, ensure that it is stronger than each individual that occupies any office where you can describe as powerful. So that really uh, will be how I want to open regarding in what I see the last presidential poll uh, to have been and the fact that there is a lot more work for us to do uh, than we think we've ever done before. Okay, let's now uh, try to wrestle with the suggestion of Mr. Peter Obi. Uh, he is proffering the idea of a single five-year term uh, the presidential candidate of the PDP, uh, Alaji uh, Atuku, also at earlier, uh, preferred the six-year single term. Not that these ideas are very original or very authentic to these two characters. Uh, it was while Dr. Gulokebele Jonathan was the uh, president that he once also suggested a single six-year tenor for the President of the Republic. Uh, what's your take on all these uh, suggestions? Well, I'd like to say that those that have made this statement are those who have actually, you know, waded through the political waters of the country and because they've done that, uh, it's important to also listen. But I also have to say that with every sense of humility and in my own right, as somebody who has spoken for a presidential candidate in this country, I also think I'm a huge stakeholder in the political process. Now, 
these suggestions are often made by those who have lost in an election because it appears as if their dreams are far from being realized. But it is often not so much about amending the constitution for um, the person who aspires or eventually becomes a president to do a single term. It's the fact that it enables many of the citizens of this country to see the constitution as theirs. So having just an amendment amongst many other issues, uh, which of course dwells on a political representation may not be actually satisfactory. But since that is the context of discussion, I think I'd like to chew upon the candidate you've actually put upon my lips. Let's say this. A five-year term would guarantee that you have a 30-year cycle and it should have gone through the six geopolitical zones. But let's bear in mind here that except, of course, you're talking about the Hausa people, the Yoruba people, the Igbo people, the Ijo people, Maybe you want to talk about the Fulani people because that is the order. There's no tribe called Hausa Fulani, that's a fraud. You've got the Hausa, you've got the Yoruba, you've got, of course, the Igbo. You have the Ijo and you in terms of the numbers. Now, if we look at these particular that we have, according to the numbers that we have, it is very obvious, therefore, that it is to seek representation for anybody that a region of the country brings forward. Now, let's look at a five-year uh, single term such as we have had it. So now you have a President Mahmoud Bari, who is a Fulani, representing the northwest of the country. The power has come southwest of the country. After that, what makes us think for an Anand Brahma would agree that somebody from Imo or somebody from Eboni, who perhaps is seen as the most qualified to participate or to be the flag bearer. I'm simply saying that anything that would enable equal strength across the respective geopolitical zones and that would not make each tribe to feel left out despite the number, it is what it is. And that is what I want to run to Switzerland. In Switzerland, you've got, let me even say this for those who care to listen, that Peter B and Atiku Abubakar really didn't tell people. They went to Switzerland to actually tell us what indeed is being practiced in Switzerland. In Switzerland, You've got five major five major languages plus one. And this particular language, Switzerland is a country that is less than six million because Germany is the a country with the highest population in Western Europe, followed of course by England. So Switzerland is between, let me say, four to fifty million if at all my my my, my population calculation for that country is correct. So what Switzerland does is the the people who are German speakers in Switzerland, first of all, will bring up a person. The people who are, of course, maybe, for instance, you're talking about those who speak um, uh, Italian, those who speak maybe Swiss, that is like it is then some minority groups. And that is possible because Switzerland doesn't have the complexity of the numerous number of ethnics that we have in this country, and that has enabled it to be able to practice that. Then again, Switzerland understands as a country that institutions are stronger than individuals. But in this part of the world, Individuals are stronger than the institution. And that is why courts will give verdicts. A president will not follow the verdict of the court, and the president wants the citizens to obey the laws of the land, whereas the president is the chief violator of the laws of the land. President Bari was a classic example in annoying disobedience to court injunctions that can never be exemplified for any leader. So when you have that kind of individual, and you're proposing, for instance, a five-year single tenor, it is dangerous because individuals in this political entity have not learned to actually be the people that can listen to the dictates of the grown norm of the country that is undoubtedly superior to everybody in the land. Uh, okay. So I need to make that clear as part of the conversation. Uh, uh, okay. I think Abubakar that is saying a six year single term is possible. I think Abubakar has been a perennial participant in the nation's quest to assume office as the president of this country. I was thinking that before one of his quests to actually become the candidate of a political party, he would have suggested a six-year single term. You cannot begin to prefer solution and do certain political pontifications after elections does in favor you. Uh, uh, okay. Because I don't uh, think that is politically okay. exemplary of these people. Uh, 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 if Peter Obi himself uh, has said it will result to the court of the people, which perhaps he has done. All of these suggestions are good. But, but uh, let's, let's, get, uh, let, let's, get, let's get very practical here. Uh, it is almost obvious 
I cannot hear you, please. I can't hear you. Uh, you can't hear me? Uh, should we go for a short break and see if you can get... Um, I cannot hear you, please. You I'm can't hear me? Hear I can't. Uh, okay, we're going on a short break now. And when we're back, we take it down from where we stopped. Uh, welcome back. We really want to apologize for the technical glitch. It does happen in the best of circumstances. Uh, Kunu, uh, okay, I yes. was just about asking you that the idea of rotational presidency was actually also deliberated extensively upon by the last national confab and they made recommendations to that effect. Indeed, you earlier alluded to the collegiate, uh, the collegiate presidency in, in Switzerland. Uh, they indeed also took that line. It is looking like, and, and I'm talking now as a Nigerian who believes in, in inclusivity, it's looking like if you're from the southeast temple of Nigeria, or if you're from the minorities of the north central, you may be so disillusioned with the present system because under it will be pretty difficult, if not utterly or totally impossible, for a Southeasterner or somebody from the Middle Belt to emerge as the president of Nigeria, except it is rotated on a geopolitical zone basis. What would you say to that? Well, as I said before, uh, some of these suggestions that are coming uh, from the leaders of um, these parties who have lost in the elections are suggestions that they feel uh, they could incorporate that actually emanated from other climes. But I have to say that the people of a country, uh, you know, are the main reasons why the laws function because they've come to terms with the fact that if the country functions well, uh, everything will work. In the first place, let's make it clear that this country is actually very fraudulent with regard to how the geopolitical zones are actually carved out. Now, you have to tell me first what Quara State is doing in the North Central. You have to also tell me uh, how they have to create seven states for the northwestern part of this country and the southeastern part of this country actually has just five states. The aspect of geopolitical, uh, you know, regions is also something that can be contested because lots of people have not actually done what they should do right. So uh, but, but, Kunu, but, but Kunu, you will, you will agree that at least, that it, 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 you will agree, you will agree that it increases, it increases the odds in favor of uh, in some individuals, however, maybe because they are well credentialed or because they are well resourced, it increases the odds for some individuals in those geopolitical zones to at least also uh, be be able to become the president. Okay, while we we'll say that that will likely be true, but who are the money bags in this region? According to documented mm -hmm. research facts of politics in this country, the northwestern part of this country has, in the main, accounted for who becomes the president, regardless of the people that are in the northeastern part of this country. Show me a man from the northeastern part of this country that has become president, for instance, in the past 20, 23 years, and I say, indeed, the systems work. Let's say this. Uh, okay, we, we need to conclude. We need, we need to conclude. Uh, and in, in, in wrapping up, in, in wrapping up, I just want to. Uh, are you saying? Uh, are you saying the idea is a sort of inanity or a kind of a political bunkum that's not worth? Uh, is not worth the the traction that some people des thinks it uh, think it deserves. Well, I think that it could solve a problem, but it is not the first thing that should be addressed. The inequality amongst the regions with regard to number of states in the geopolitical zone must be addressed. 
So if Northwest has seven states, which gives it advantage of numbers, other regions should also actually have that equal number of states before you talk about a balance. Okay. If what is suggested... Uh, okay. You are going, you are, uh, okay, you are going, you are going totally to another another uh, subject for another day. Uh, it'd be lovely to have you, it, it'd be lovely to have you on the equity of state, uh, state distribution in the geopolitical zones. Akunu always, uh, always intellectually engaging, always interesting, uh, you know, to match up with you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the privilege. Uh, today's throwback, Nigeria. A nation in darkness after more than 115 years of electric power generation. Further to the decision or the full colonization of Lagos on 6 August 1861 under the threat of force by Commander Bedingfield of HMS Prometheus, who was accompanied by the acting British Consul William Macroskri, the red bearded Scottish man that the Gaussians of your named. Akwabon area, a colloquial abbreviation of the phrase Onyibo Akwon Lagbon after a settlement or quarters around today's marina known then as Okoko Maiko. Hence, marina was the first Okoko, where the Flagstaff House, Lagos Government House, the General Hospital, which started as a medical facility exclusively for Europeans until some of the founding members of the Island Club physically, indeed, violently protested under Governor Cameron under Cameron in the early 1930s. To CMS, where the Anglican Cathedral and the Bishop's Lodge are located, the streets of the settlement were lit in the evening with oil-fired lanterns to deter burglars. However, electric power generation in Nigeria began in 1896 and was used to replace the lanterns used for street lighting. In 1929, the Nigeria Electric Supply Company, NESCO, was established. In 1951, the Electric Corporation of Nigeria, ECN, statutorily came into being through a federal ordinance, as colonial legislations were called in pre-independent Nigeria, to take over the assets of NESCO. In 1962, NDA, Nigeria Dams Authority, which controlled the dams around Chiroro and River Niger was established through an act of the National Assembly to develop the hydropower potentials in Nigeria. In 1972, the ECN and NDA were merged to form the infamous and now defunct NEPA, National Electric Power Authority. I never said, don't never expect power, you know which later evolved to Power Holding Company of Nigeria, PHCN, as a holding company which gave birth to the operationally privatized electricity discos, distribution companies, that are inefficient monopoly supposedly distributing darkness across the geopolitical, geopolitical regions and some major cities like Lagos, Abuja, Ibadan, Akano, ETC. In conclusion, as you would see when we write on the on and off 100 years plus history of light rail mass transit in Lagos, you will see that we as a people, either through the inevitable failure of visionless leadership or other culturalized malevolent factors have perfected the art of retrogressing, except in outlandish and low life guaranteed population explosion. Nigeria adds the equivalent of the population of Norway, 5 million every year. And that's it on the show tonight. I am Bola Oba. Have a good